Pony. I do car truck SUV reviews on YouTube and today we are in the new completely redesigned 2020 Nissan Sentra and I gotta be honest in my humble opinion this is without a doubt better looking than the Civic and Corolla. It's a part of the reason contributing to the Sentra's new better looks right now is it is two inches wider, two inches lower than the previous generation Sentra. And that is going to make a huge difference when it comes to aesthetic appeal, of course. A little fun fact for you guys. Did you know that the Sentra was first introduced back in 1982 and since then has sold more than 6 million units? That is a ton of vehicles sold for a specific car. So essentially, Actually, this one is a legend in its own right. So what do you say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as expected, there are a few different trim levels for the new 2020 Sentra. First one being the S, starting at $19,090. Then you have the SV for $20,270. And lastly, the SR, the one we are in today, starting at $21,430. And so regardless of trim level though, power plant on this one is going to be the same. Powering this little beast is going to be a two liter direct injected inline four cylinder, putting out 149 horsepower at 6,400 RPM. 146 pound-feet of torque available at 4,400 RPM. Power sent to front wheels through a CVT with a zero to 60 time, approximately 9.2 seconds, which uh, doesn't sound like the fastest thing in the world, but we will be testing out the acceleration later in this video, so I will let you know my humble thoughts on that. But all in all, MPG numbers actually are quite impressive, coming in at 29 city, 39 highway for the S and SV trim levels at least. And then if you were to go with the SR that we have today, 28 in the city, 37 on the highway. Still very impressive there. Either way, taking regular unleaded fuel, AKA 87 octane. All in all, when you look at those specs on paper, this one definitely equates to more of a commuter car, which isn't a bad thing. That's probably what most of the people buying this car will be using it for. So it's right on point there. As far as driving modes go, there is one, there is an eco driving mode. That button is located just by the driver's left knee. So when you press that, it's gonna kind of limit the throttle response and adjust the climate control setting a little bit allowing you to get even more miles per gallon so again commuter car kind of vibe there but so now having touched on all those specs i think you guys know what time it is let's go ahead and do a quick little acceleration here again zero to 60 in 9.2 seconds let's see what it actually feels like though so let's go ahead and put this to a test let me find a straightaway and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed all right you guys and here's a little bit of a straightaway for us here let's go ahead and uh let's go It's actually not bad. I mean, zero to 60, 9.2 is certainly not gonna win any races, but acceleration wise, it's not bad. Um, I, I would say it's certainly enough to merge onto the highway. Shouldn't have any issues there, but again, it's not the quickest thing in the world, but it's a commuter car, so what do you expect? But to go along with that acceleration as always, braking is equally important. So the brake setup is actually gonna differ slightly depending upon the trim level that you go with here. For example, up front, either way, you get ventilated front discs, but in the back, you will get rear drum brakes if you go with the S trim level at least. SV and SR are going to give you solid rear discs, therefore you will get a little better braking power if you go with the SV or SR trim levels. But here's another little fun fact for you guys. When comparing the Nissan Sentra as far as braking goes, comparatively speaking to the Corolla, 60 to zero measurement comes in at 114 feet which does beat the Corolla as we come up to a red light here. But having said that, braking feel is a little bit on the softer side, not quite as firm as I would like to have seen, but nonetheless, the Sentra does beat as far as braking distance goes the Corolla, which again is a huge plus if it's a commuter car and you have to come to a quick stop. So that's a good thing. Bit touching on suspension and handling a little bit. Up front, you're gonna get an independent strut front suspension. In the back, multi-link rear suspension, of course, front and rear stabilizer bars. That's pretty much all expected so as far as the ride quality goes it's been perfectly fine nissan definitely tuned this one quite nicely to absorb a lot of the roads imperfections. so ride quality is 100 on point here no issues there steering feel this is another one that actually surprised me you guys so a lot of nissans that i've been reviewing lately do have a looser steering feel and even the center in the past has had a super loose steering feel but for 2020 nissan has definitely firmed up the steering feel with the center so it is a little bit weightier than i quite honestly expected even the 2020 Nissan Rogue it's so loosey-goosey it really doesn't give the driver any sort of feedback but with the Sentra 
it actually does. I like it. I will say I actually like the steering feel here. So I gotta be honest, I'm quite happy with the steering feel. As far as cabin noise goes, it's been perfectly fine for me so far on my test drive today. Not a whole lot of exterior noises coming into the cabin, so that's a huge plus too. Then touching on visibility as I'm looking at the cop in my rear view mirror there, I can see perfectly fine. I can see him back there. He's not coming after me, so visibility is 100% on point, so definitely no issues there. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this strikingly gorgeous 2020 Nissan Sentra. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new completely redesigned 2020 Nissan Sentra looking absolutely amazing. But let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Active grill shutters actually coming standard on the new 2020 Nissan Sentra. Essentially what that means is those shutters will open and close depending on the engine cooling that is needed. You guys can kind of see that behind that front grill there. Surrounding that front grill will be a chrome V-Motion front grill coming standard with the S and SV. You will find a dark chrome V-Motion front grill with the SR of course. To the sides, halogen headlights coming with the S and SV trim levels they will of course come with the automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark out they will turn on automatically for you there actually led headlights with led daytime running lights coming with the sr that of course is what you were looking at right now and you will find led fog lights just below again only for the sr trim level in case you were interested then make your way to the side i do want to mention you guys have probably seen some of these new centers with a gloss black roof that is available for the sr trim level although we don't have it today but it is available as an option if you wanted to go that route of course floating roof line towards the back you guys can see that gloss black accent that creates the floating roof line of course chrome belt line molding coming standard body colored power adjustable side mirrors for the s and sv trim levels and then if you were to go with the sv or sr you will find heated side mirrors with led integrated turd signals as well and those side mirrors will be finished in a gloss black exterior if you were to go with the sr trim level do want to also mention looking down that sr trim level is also going to add some added side skirts a little better appearance there as well wheel setup of course is going to differ amongst the trim levels as well for example on this sr that we have today it is wearing 18 inch aluminum alloy wheels now let's go ahead and make our way to the back on this one sr trim level giving you a body colored rear spoiler coming standard silver rear diffuser down below again with the sr trim level only you will actually get a body colored rear diffuser if you go with the s or sv trim levels as opposed to the silver one that we have here today and just below it all single exhaust outlet coming standard for all trim levels however if you were to go with the sr you will find a chrome exhaust tip so do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip All right, so now since we are round back, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there is a button on the key fob if you like, simply press that. There's also a button by the driver's side left knee. That is yet another way. And of course, there is a button on the trunk itself. So any of those ways are perfectly fine, of course. Once opened up, cargo capacity is gonna come in at 14.3 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space there if you needed it. Then make your way up to the rear legroom. That is gonna come in at 34.7 inches. So for reference, I mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. Also for those rear passengers, there is a rear center armrest with cup holders. If you were to go with the SV or SR trim levels, there is no rear ventilation in case you were curious about that. Some compact cars in the segment has it. I knew the Volkswagen Golf has it, but it is not available on the center, although you probably don't need it with the size of a vehicle anyways. As far as space back there, again, I mean even six feet tall. I had plenty of space actually. So make your way up to the front seats. They are manually adjustable front seats for all trim levels and they will come with cloth seating for the S trim level and a premium cloth for the SV and a sport cloth with some contrast orange stitching for the SR trim level. So essentially you're looking at a cloth setup one way or another, but there is some optional seating actually available for the SV and SR trim levels. The SV actually probably gives you the best optional seating being an optional quilted leather setup, just like the Nissan Maxima. So that is probably the very best seating setup that you can go with when it comes to the Sentra. However, for the S 
Plus R trim level. There is an optional leatherette finish if you wanted to go that route. And there's optional six-way power adjustable front seats and there's optional heated front seats as well. So a ton of options actually when it comes to the seating, but nonetheless, they are comfortable. But taking a look up front, there is a tilt and telescoping steering wheel. It is leather wrapped for the SV and SR trim levels. And believe it or not, if you wanted a heated steering wheel, that is an option for the SR. So if you live in a colder climate as I do here in Pennsylvania, that's pretty cool that you have that as an option. But let's now go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your all of your buttons located on one side of the key, essentially Nissan logo at the top. And just below that Nissan logo, the circular button, that is your remote start coming standard for the SV and SR trim levels. So that is pretty cool, allowing you to warm up the sensor before you actually get inside on super cold days. That's a plus. But for the SV and SR trim levels, it is keyless entry with a push button start. If you wanted that traditional turn key, go with the S. But so all I am going to do basically is just simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button, which is located directly in front of the shifter there. And so, but then once started up, tachometer is on your left, speedometer is on your right. There is a fairly large digital display front and center. To control what is on that digital display, there are steering wheel mounted controls on the left side of the steering wheel. That's going to give you a ton of different information, including how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There's your outside temperature. Digital speedometer, if you wanted to go that route, there's your average miles per gallon. Speed limit recognition technology, along with a bunch of other safety features actually as well, but really a ton of different things you can check out up there. So that's pretty cool. Make your way to overall interior quality. Power moonroof can be had with the SV and SR premium packages. So it's not gonna come standard on any particular trim, but it is optional on those two trims though. Dual zone climate control coming with the SV and SR trim level. I do like all the orange stitching that we have here in the SR trim level as well. It ties together very well with the orange stitching, not only on the steering wheel, but again on the seats too. Then on the doors, you have a carbon fiber imitation look. It is plastic, of course, but it looks good nonetheless. I do like the jet fighter style air vents located just below the infotainment display there. That look pretty cool. Kind of like Mercedes Benz has always done it. You do have an overhead sunglass holder on the roof here. Just just in front of the shifter, you have some charging ports as expected, a phone charger, USB charging port, auxiliary port, and 12 volt power outlet. Also a good bit of storage in front of that shifter as well. And just behind that, you have dual cup holders again with that carbon fiber look finish. That looks pretty cool. Looks like right behind the shifter, there's like a key holder. So if you wanted to leave your key there, I guess that's fine too. And then just in the middle of it all under the center armrest, you do have a very, actually very deep storage area, a lot deeper than a lot of other compact cars in its set. Segment. So well done Nissan for that. But overall, it's pretty much as expected. Again, the very best interior, I'll show you guys a picture on the video here, is with the SV trim level and that quilted leather. That is the very best setup for the center as far as interior goes. But the exterior, the SR is where it's at. But nonetheless, let's now go ahead and take a look at the tech display front and center. If you were to go with the S trim level, you will find a seven inch color touchscreen display. However, if you were to go with the SV or SR trims, you will get an eight inch color touchscreen display. But either way, you still get Bluetooth and audio streaming. However, for the SV and SR, you will get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. It's not going to come with the S trim level, unfortunately, but it is with the SV and SR. So that's definitely a big plus. It essentially means you can hook your smartphone up to the center, have free navigation up on that tech display, as well as the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs, of course. Then you can check out your radio settings as expected. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system, you will find four speakers with the S. That's not a whole lot. Six speakers. If you go with the SV or SR, that's a pretty standard setup right there and there is an optional eight speaker Bose sound system if you were to go with the SR premium package so we do have that standard six speaker setup here today so what do you say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one actually not bad a little bit better than I'm used to hearing with the six speaker sound system definitely not bad on the bass plenty loud for the center so overall not a bad sound system when it comes to six speakers of course Bose sound systems are always going to kill it but for that six speaker sound system it's not that bad but so anyways last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display is when you do put the center in reverse you will find a rear view camera for all trim levels across the board 
And if you were to go with the SR Premium package, you will in addition to that get a surround view monitor. So a bird's eye view of everything around the Sentra. So that is actually available for the Sentra. You usually find that on luxury cars. So that's definitely a big old plus there too. But that is going to let you know who or what is behind you. And that is going to lead us into safety. So to start front side, side curtain airbags will come standard as well as driver and passenger knee airbags up front as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Power pressure monitoring system also comes standard, but here's the best part. Also standard across the board for all trim levels, a ton of advanced safety features, including forward collision warning, automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, lane departure warning, a blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert, that's huge, rear sonar system, rear automatic braking, driver attention system, and high beam assist. A lot of these safety features are options on other manufacturers, but they are all going to come standard on the Sentra. That's wonderful. And so in the end, when it comes to my final thoughts on the Nissan Sentra, for one, whoever designed this one at Nissan needs a big old raise because it looks absolutely amazing. Certainly better looking than the Civic and Corolla. Standard safety is excellent on this one. Typically the blind spot monitor is found on upper trim levels of other manufacturers, but it's standard on the Sentra. That's awesome. And although the CVT has gotten better in this Nissan Sentra, as far as simulating shifts, I still think if Nissan were to ditch the CVT and replace it with, let's say, maybe Infiniti 7 speed automatic that they do have already, they could just drop it in here it would dominate. It would absolutely dominate this segment. It's one of those things where it's just so obvious what change needs to be made to absolutely make this thing wonderful. And Nissan just needs to do it at this point. Automatic transmission would be amazing. DCT would be even better, but still loving the heavier steering feel in the center. They did an amazing job with that. Overall, a very solid pick for a commuter car. I would even say, having owned a lot of Civics in the past, I would even say I would probably go with this one at this point compared to the Civic and the Corolla. Corolla is going to be more reliable, of course, but the Sentra should be plenty reliable. And overall, it looks better, has a great steering feel. The only thing I would add to this one, besides changing up the transmission, would be offering a Nismo version. I think that would be absolutely wonderful with a little more power, perhaps, to compete with cars like the Civic Si, like the Kia Forte GT, Hyundai Elantra Sport, cars like that. I would think that would be pretty darn cool. But so anyways, that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there. If you like, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay go.